You've seen it being played everywhere, from legends such as Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters to Roger Taylor from Queen, from the biggest stages in the world to cozy jazz clubs around town. You've probably seen this logo every time you see the drummer. If you are watching this video, you'll probably fall into two categories, the ones that are already experts in the drumming field, or the ones who couldn't care less and can't tell the difference between a drum set and a guitar. And that's okay, because in today's video, we are appealing to the latter. So stay tuned as we go behind the business and find out how DW Drums started. But before we continue, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be the first to be notified of new behind the business videos that we post every week. Let's begin. It all began with this man, Don Lombardi. From an early age, Don had a real passion for drumming. Straight out of high school, he was already playing professionally doing studio work as well as touring with bands. Even though he was making a living doing those gigs, Don found joy in teaching and educating other people and started teaching part-time. In 1972, after making a name as a drum teacher traveling from client to client, he wanted to settle down and start a drum school, where clients could travel to him instead. So he opened a small studio in Santa Monica, California and named it Drum Workshop, where he could conduct private lessons for individuals looking to become the next drumming legend, and monthly drum workshops where he could invite accomplished drummers to give an educational seminar on drumming. However, he soon realized that with any business, the overheads were the killers. At this point in time, a 17-year-old boy named John Good came by Drum Workshop wanting to better himself as a drummer. However, that didn't go according to plan. Don always had John around because he enjoyed the conversations they had when it came to drumming. In order for the business to survive, they needed to generate new revenue streams. So when John heard that Drum Workshop was bleeding money, he suggested that they go into the retail business and that's what they did. They started to sell books, sticks, and drums to cover the cost. But little did they know, Drum Workshop was just getting started. The additional revenue from the sales allowed Lombardi to hire part-time teachers to take care of the educational loop, freeing his time to grow the business. After much conversation with John, he realized that there was actually a need in the drumming community that needed to be met. As the duo were drummers themselves, they always found that the seat for a drummer was always very uncomfortable. So what did they do? They developed one themselves and this was the result, the Trap K Seat, DW's first original drum product. The Trap K Seat became a success in the drumming community and with John Good's knowledge, they were able to turn a profit selling this product. However, despite the rising sales, they were still not able to move away from teaching and become a full-fledged manufacturing brand. However, that soon changed. In the mid-90s, there was a company called Camco who was dominating the drum industry, everything from the hardware to the actual drum shells itself. They were doing pretty successfully. However, when the rock and roll wave took over, they failed to jump on that bandwagon, unlike their counterparts, and almost entirely lost that market. As more and more people were leaning towards the rock and roll craze, business for Camco soon fizzled out. And unfortunately, in 1977, it was over. Camco Drumco had thrown in the towel. But as a legend departs, newer ones are born. And that was what happened. As Camco was winding up and business was being liquidated, the owner of Camco, Tom Beckman, made Don Lombardi an offer that would change the future for both himself and his company. With the vision of becoming an actual drum manufacturing company, Lombardi pulled together funds, borrowing money from his parents, as well as getting external investors involved, and agreed to purchase all of Camco's manufacturing assets, as machinery dies and molds. It was all DW's everything except the Camco name. With this new purchase began a new era for DW. This gave DW the capacity to focus completely on product development and manufacturing. As Camco soon dissolved, DW was innovating ahead, particularly in the area of the kick drum pedal. Good and Lombardi both agreed that the bass drum pedals from Camco were pretty good and wanted to refine them. As a result, DW's next big product was a refined version of the Camco 5000 nylon strap bass drum pedal. DW's version of the pedal was quieter, smoother, more consistent and adjustable. All of a sudden, that pedal began catching the eye of drummers all around the world. And after even further innovation in 1980, DW was propelled to the summits of the drum pedal market with the creation of their DW5000 double bass pedal. The DW's 5000 pedal later would become a go-to workhorse pedal of the drumming world. Throughout the 1980s, DW was building a reputation for themselves, creating even more innovative hardware, such as the rotating 2 leg 5500T, 
and the remote Cable 5502 LB hi-hat stands. While Don Lombardi was in California working on DW pedals and hardware, John Good was out on the road building his drum knowledge as a technician. He was working for some of the biggest acts of the 1980s, including Earth, Wind & Fire, Frank Zappa, and Madonna, among many others. By setting up and tuning the drums to perfection every night, he not only developed an incredible understanding of how to make drums sound great, but also innovative ideas about how they could do even better. However, despite all the knowledge and know-how, John was still skeptical if DW could make it in the drum industry. One day, the drummer for Motley Crue, Tommy Lee, walked into the shop to have his pedals tuned up. As he was waiting, he chanced upon a set of drums in John's office, sat down at it, and started playing. Immediately, he was blown away at how it sounded and couldn't stop playing. It was then that it occurred to John that Tommy Lee represented a group of drummers that had not been exposed to handcrafted drums. And sure enough, a while later, Tommy Lee bought a DW kit. It didn't stop there as, within the year, Tommy Lee went from being a Pearl artist to becoming a DW endorsee. It was the beginning of a new generation as the Tommy Lee endorsement allowed DW to move past being known as just a hardware manufacturer. DW was now being taken seriously as a full-on drum manufacturer. In 1990, DW produced their first official catalog of products, which they took to that year's National Association of Music Merchants annual show. Hoping that some of their pedal dealers would be interested in taking a drum kit each. However, they were pleasantly mistaken. And on the opening day of the show, they took orders for a whopping 60 drum kits. This was far more than expected, and the company spent the rest of the year catching up on orders before the next show. The next 10 years were an unprecedented decade of growth for the company, as they invented and innovated on an incredible scale. Slowly, more people started catching on to their product, and they were endorsed by everyone from technical masters like Marco Minerman, Sheila E., Terry Bozio, and the late great Neil Peart, as well as drummers for popular acts like Bruce Springsteen, Madonna, Incubus, Dixie Chicks, and Missy Elliott, who play DW drums, pedals, and hardware exclusively. Even with the newfound success, DW was not ready to kick back and continue to push forth with innovation. They released their now famous Collector Series, which essentially is a set of drums that are produced with extra attention to detail, using the finest or rarest materials all in the name of getting the perfect sound. The drive for excellence never died down, and DW just kept introducing quality products to the table over and over again. The turn of the millennium brought with it a new dimension to DW production, entry and mid-level gear. Up to that point, the company had focused totally on high-end custom products and cutting-edge design that sold for a lot of money. But they neglected the entry-level buyer who aspired to one day play a DW kit but simply couldn't afford it. Enter Pacific Drums and Percussion, PDP for short. The move to a new factory meant they had the space to produce high-quality drums using computerized machinery, which greatly reduced the cost of production, bringing the price of a kit down without compromising on quality allowing the DW brand to reach more people. The addition of a value-for-money drum set range did not end the DW team's desire to push the limits of innovation at the top end of the market. With cash from the different lines it was offering, DW was able to acquire other companies under its name. Slingerland Drums, Ovation Guitars, and Latin Percussion, just to name a few. At the end of the day, the DW story just goes to show that if you solve a problem with an excellent product, it will speak for itself. John Good and Don Lombardi did not set out to make the most money with their drum company. Instead, they were just solving problems that they themselves faced in the drumming world. Today, DW has expanded to be one of the biggest musical instrument businesses today, with an array of guitar, cymbal, and percussion companies under its belt. It is safe to say that the DW brand is going to live a lifetime. DW stands for so much more than just a drum company. It stands for innovation through the ages. So which is your favorite DW drummer and why? Do leave us a comment down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be the first to be notified of new behind the business videos we post every week. Be inspired and we will see you in the next one. Since you made it all the way to this point, here are two more videos that we know you are going to love. Go on, click on it. You know you want to.